you doing? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are all over the world. In our Bible study today, I want to treat what the Lord put in my heart. And today, I don't know, I believe God will help me. Because I felt that, thank you Lord Jesus. I feel the anointing for mercy and compassion on me right now. Today's Bible study is for you. Maybe you are a servant of God that is almost given up. Maybe you are, a, you are someone who has tried and tried and tried and you keep failing. And you don't know what to do again. In fact, the truth is, what they said you did, maybe you messed up. And because of your past mistake, it's difficult for you to now move forward. You did what they said you did, but you have truly repented. But the problem with man is that man never forgets. God has forgiven, but man never forgets. And that, that unforgiveness, or, 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 or the remembrance of man keep haunting you. I'm here today to release upon your life an anointing for mercy. I want you to call your friends. If you have a pastor friend who is fed up, maybe the church, the church is giving you problem. You don't know what to do. And you are you are you are almost giving up on ministry because you are expecting growth. Growth is not coming the way you expect, and it's like you are not called. But you can't shake up the fact that you are called. And people are castigating you. People are running you down, and you don't know what to do. God will help you today because mercy will speak for you. My first scripture, which is my main scripture, is from the book of Judges, chapter six, chapters. Judges chapter 16. We have the story of Samson there. Yeah, I know Samson messed up big time. Samson was an extraordinary man because a warm person army with one job of an ass, he killed a thousand soldiers. You can imagine what that is. But he had a weakness. Weakness towards women. He had another weakness uncontrollable anger out of out of anger he walked out of his engagement party he left the wife there he went back home the father of the bride gave the wife to another person because the, they have paid the bride price he's anointed i know in fact there's no one like him in all of history but he had that problem and he had eyes for wrong women Maybe you also, you have eyes for wrong men or wrong women. You are a young lady, but you are always running after married men. I don't know why. He has eyes for wrong women. He's always running after prostitutes here and there. He doesn't even have one stable prostitute. Every city that he goes, he looks for a, a, the house of prostitutes, and they go there, he look at them, the one that he feels he likes, he will just go in and sleep with her. His life was messed up. All the while, the anointing was still working because the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. God cannot withdraw whatever he has given to you. So please, I beg you in the name of God. If you are watching me right now and you are highly used of God, please, I beg you, I beg you. Don't let the anointing be cloud you. I, I beg you. I beg, I've been there. I've been there. Before I got married, when I was far, far younger, almost like, like almost 25, 30 years ago, the anointing is there. The sick are being healed. The demon possessed are being delivered. And at the time, I even thought that okay, me, I don't even cover everything. And I was almost, of course, I don't really, I'm not really the promiscuous type. But there's this lady among my workers at that time that just loved me because of the anointing. And she was ready for me to be sleeping with her if necessary. She even told me, anything you need, even me, let me know. That's why I say I beg you. Ah, along a long time I say along to be with you. That particular, I can't forget. That particular time. We're having a special program. It's a three days program. I almost fornicated with her after the first night. Because I I I I I I accompany her to her house. I'm a young man. I'm not married. I don't have anyone as fancy. And I almost slept with her. But God had mercy on me. What made me to be afraid? Let me tell you. 
was the way the anointing moved the following day. The anointing moved in a quadruple way the following day. I was thinking that since I almost messed up the day before, everything was going to dry the following day. The manifestation of God on the following day was more than, was more than quadruple what I saw the first day. And that made me to begin to shake. I said, ah, I'm not letting your lost my body. I don't know why I'm telling you this. But when I was preparing this morning, I felt an anointing upon me. God help me. God help me. Maybe you fell into it. And it's been haunting your life. I remember Catherine Coleman. She got married to the wrong person as an evangelist being used of God. And when it was obvious that it was not the will of God, she pulled out of the marriage. And for I was, we're told by historians that for 10 years after then, every time she goes to do crusade, somebody will rise up and say, don't listen to her. She's a divorcee. And the whole crusade will crumble for 10 years. Until the one time the Lord came to her and said, I have forgiven you. That Catherine is dead. So every time you hear her preach after them, when they, so after the next one after them, when they said, don't talk, talk, talk to her, don't mind her, she's a divorcee. She said, that Catherine is dead. This is a new Catherine. The one that the Lord has forgiven. The one that the Lord has redeemed. And that was when our ministry, boom, exploded. But she did not continue in sin. I said all that to say that don't allow anointing to blindfold you. That grace will cover it. Ah, when you get to heaven and Jesus said I never know you you that work in equity because Jesus said on that day many will come and say Lord I, 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 I raise the dead in your name I heal the sick in your name I cast out devil in your name I do many mighty work in your name and he will say I, 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 I do not know you you that are workers of iniquity if you continue to live in sin you are risking your heaven and what shall he profit a man to your long if you gain the whole world and lose your heaven at, oh, what can you in eternity? At most, you live 70 or 80, 100. But in heaven, you are going to live thousands of years. Ah! Ah! Lord, what body? I pray God will touch your heart today. Samson went to one of the prostitute called Delilah and the Philistines had a bargain with Delilah to discover the secret of his power. Unfortunately for Samson, the Bible says the soul that sinner shall die. He is dead spiritually. He told the secret of his amount to a stranger. What is the Huh? And then when he said that, the enemy took it. Verse 19, Judges chapter 16, from verse 19. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven lock of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. What is Ashiria here? You are telling me, you are here. And she said, the Philistines be upon the Samson. And he woke out of his sleep or day. And he said, I will go out as at other time before and shake myself, Bibo. And he wished not, he did not know that the Lord has departed from him. Verse 21. But the Philistine took him and put out his eyes, vision to law, and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Verse 22. Your position of mercy. Ah, on one way I did However, the hair of his head began to grow again after it was shaven. The hair of his head. God will never forget his covenant. And he has asked me to tell you today that you may have forgotten that he lost you, but he still loves you. You may have gone far away, maybe into fetish things, but he still loves you. 
you may have to lose those money you have gotten in the ill well. The ones you get by 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 mystic power and all those demonic sources. But he loves you. The enemy caught the Samson's here. Yeah, that is the covenant. In fact, God never told Samson that the day they caught this year, I will let it grow back. God never told him. But to the unknown, the Bible says, however, the hair of his head, the symbol of his anointing, began to grow again after he was shaven. Samson did not know that though the Lord departed from him, but out of mercy, the Lord has come back. Hello, Nikki, suffer any that he has come back to have mercy upon you today. Today, that you are hearing me. The Lord asked me to tell you that he has come back to wipe the shame away. God asked me to tell you that this day, I see strangers that are coming to you and God is sending them. They will help you for restoration. I pray your eyes will be open to see them. Because when God sent strangers to Abraham, he saw them. And he was able to take care of them. I pray. I want him to read. I don't know whether it means that they are not from your country. I don't know. Maybe they are going to appear in your dream. I don't know. But God will send strangers to visit you. And those people's visitation will be the delivery of the mercy for your life and destiny. For your ministry. For your marriage. For your finances. The year of his head. Began to grow again. Uh, the hair of his head began to grow again. As I speak right now, I see the gifting of God in your life that the enemy seems to have frozen. I see him receiving life. The hair of his head began to grow again. The hair of his head began to grow again. To be alone, that sin, alone, you back, baby. Our God never forgets. Ah, the hair of if God can make the hair of Samson's head to grow again, ah, uh, uh, your own anointing will flow back. But bear, your anointing will flow back. I did not condone people doing the wrong thing because let me tell you, it takes a long time for you to restore what is lost. It takes time for people to develop confidence in your integrity again. To buy the pension of David, you just go lenient. Oh, sure, you don't go there. Ah, I know it's shame. If after God has forgiven you, men will not forget to show my brother will keep it a man more. Covert it, but you don't go to the Pope because Peter will say, Ah, we follow the master everywhere. Many Madalia, they do the same check. Judas, see, Judas, see, and you are you are signed for the money. Ah. James and John will have caught that thunder from heaven. But God did not allow that. What am I trying to say? Whatever you know you are doing wrong, please change. If whatever you do about it, to about it, you are not doing it. No, 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 It is demonic. All women are the same. Beauty is in the eye of the order. In the eye of the beholder. What is in that one that is not in your wife? Oh, you are not going to do that. Young women, they say, Oh, they call Uncle Sexist. Emi Obuelo, Unti Bonsonipe, train your wife to satisfy you. Before I got married, I like being practical, you know. I don't know. That's just me. Before I got married, I didn't have sex with my wife. So, and I wanted us to enjoy ourselves before we start having children. So, and I don't know much about sex. I had to go and buy every woman. It's a book. So that I can understand the principle of having sex, different posture, how they do it. Now, I educated myself. When we got married, I told my wife, this is the book I've been reading. So that you not be thinking, she came out in dog and wonder. So I, I make her to see the book I've been reading. So that when I'm experimenting on her, she will know I'm just I'm just being I'm just doing practical of the theory I've read in the book. Why do I say that? Let to be satisfied with what God gives you now. What's your problem? Over no one bad in What shall you profit a man if you gain everything and you lose heaven? And I love my wife to be skinny, but after she gave back to she started getting fat. And Nicoma Jim now called the man to my diet to my 
That don't have it like Papada. Huh? Is it worth it? I don't know why I'm talking like this, but I believe God is talking to somebody. Let me tell you one thing. In the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1, the Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Once you have given your life to Christ, you don't have any condemnation as far as God is concerned. Whatever you have done, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But don't say you now renounce that child. You now You now renounce that child. 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 You now renounce God has forgiven you, but what you have produced, you have to take care of it. Talomo, from, from Beersheba. God still brought forth Solomon, but David repented sincerely. There is no condemnation. So whatever you have done wrong before now, I'm not condemning you. None of us is perfect now. Everyone is born a baby, and a baby is prone to making mistakes. But a baby will be stupid to still be making the same mistake after 10 years. One kilo Because man expects progress. God expects progress. The only person that will be happy that you are not growing is the devil. The Bible said that, but the people that we are saying that there's no condemnation to them, they do not work after the flesh. Walk if they are alone. They don't get angry because things do not go their way. They don't steal money because they don't have money. They don't, they don't begin to look at other women because their wife deny them sex. They don't tell their, 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 their fiancé, listen, let us test it before we marry you. I want to know what, at least when you, when you, when you go to a uh, beauty, before you pay, you test the clothes, you look at it in the glass. Let me test you to be sure that I get the right thing. Uh-uh. Oh, I get back, honey. Those who are not going to be condemned by God are those who do not work after the flesh, but they are always working after the spirit. So that somebody will not say, ah, thank God. I look with your body that you I can continue in my own way. No, you cannot continue in sin and expect the grace of God to abound. No. I am simply saying whatever you have done before and up until now that the enemy is still using against you. Heaven asked me to tell you it is wiped off. The record is cleaned. The record is taken away. Now, just forget about the past and look up to God for fresh grace. Because as I speak to you right now, Lone, uh -uh, a new glory will enter your life. In the name of Jesus, whatever sin has destroyed, has killed in your life, the life of God is resurrecting them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the hair of Samson's head began to grow again because our God is a God of another chance. But you cannot continue in that area. Uh, uh, of course, the Bible says that repent and be converted. That the time of refreshing may come from above. What does that mean? Yoruba, I like the way Yoruba puts it. He said, Eronuke yipada. Repent and be converted. In other words, denounce what you are doing and turn away from it. So that the mercy can rest. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 14. The Bible says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. Why? You are not under the law. You are under, under the law. They cannot obey all the law. But you are under grace. So don't say, ah, It's my weakness. It's my weakness. Last but not be It's my weakness. It's not. There's no weakness that you have not been given grace to overcome. Because you sh sin shall not have dominion. Controlling force over you. That's what the Bible says. I am simply saying, Mercy prevail over judgment. The hair will grow back again. That guilty and the anointing will be will be will be will be will be splattered again. God will cause another opportunity, but you cannot continue in the wrong way and expect to get to the right destination. Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law. You are under grace now. Oh, so, oh, 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 you don't have an excuse. Jesus said, if your eye we take you to her. Pluck it out. Koniko, your physical jewel. No matter how important something is to you. If it's going to take you to her. If your hand will take you to her. Cut it off. It's better to enter heaven with one hand. Than to go to her with two hands. I'm not condemning you. But I'm telling you the truth. 
Because in these days, most of us are preachers, most of us we are, we are motivational speakers. We don't tell people about, about the repercussion of sin. And that's why they just think that everything is clapping hand. No, clapping hand because we are to suku, loluko, yiwapada. Repent. Because the grace of God, God is telling me that He's bringing fresh fire, apostolic fire to His church. If I in our own assembly, after the COVID issue is gone, we're going to resume back our apostolic fire conferences. We do it every third weekend of every month, but we are not doing it for now. And God is telling me that He's bringing the apostolic fire back. We are praying for all churches, not just our own. And you are one of those that God wants to use. You want the nation to touch people, but not to acquire. You have to repent. The fact that you are gifted does not mean that you have to use your gift to now to now bamboozle those those innocent girls. Heaven is watching. However, let me finish with Zechariah chapter three. In Zechariah chapter three, God is still asking me to tell you that no matter how bad it has been, no matter how worse the thing has been before, I am not so lady. Mercy is still speaking for you. Mm. Men may say it's a tough one that is, is finished, but God said, Mercy will bring you up now. Now, let's go to the book of Joshua, chapter 3, uh, Zechariah, chapter 3. Sorry, I want us to look at the story of Joshua. Joshua was a high priest, he was someone that God anointed. Maybe God spoke to the mother before he was born, and after he was born, he, he, he yielded to the call of God, but something happened, and then. His life became messed up. I'll read from verse 1. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to assist him. I believe what I will lay. Oh, bro, what do you do? Or that was To what I do was in it. And if I was in it, or what to not was Or what to get a water at Barani. I begin to say, right. God now, the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke you. Oh, Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jezalem will build you. It's not this brand plot out of fire. God was talking about Joshua, that this man was, was plot out of fire. I know that the enemy almost consumed his destiny. I know he, he, he has lost so much. I know that men have lost trust in him, but I have come to restore him. So the angel said to the devil, he said, the Lord rebuke you. Only those of us, well, you may have accusations against him. But this day, every accusation that the enemy has against you that make your head to continually be bowed down, heaven dissolve them today. In the name of Jesus, those accusations, they become a mist and the breath of God blow them off from their hand. And every proof that they have, God will make them to become nothing. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord is going to restore you back today. Joshua was 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 a brand, was a stick plucked out of the fire. One he back in one fight. One it's better to have, have him than to lose everything. Maybe you have lost a lot. Maybe you have impregnated people and you have run away. You have to go back home. You have to make your way straight. And you have to let them know your true reality. Verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garment. Ah, he was clothed very well. The man was a, was a brand plucked out of fire. Or that he balot, or balosi, or balayon, or come here, go to your shift to go to your cover. Because he's been messed up. I don't know what happened to Joshua. We are not told. But we are told his life is pathetic. And his situation, hey, has, be, has gone beyond human redemption. That's why the angel is allowed to appear. And that's why the angel will have to stand against the enemy. Maybe he cannot even pray again. Somebody is watching me. You are you have been a servant of God. You are an elderly person, and I see that because of the burnout, because of that, I don't know what happened. But you have you have you have become fed up with ministry. But inside your heart, you still love to do the work of God. But money be be in factory, as if you are working in a factory. The Lord asked me to tell you that it will, it will, it will sprout up back that fire. Uh, I, 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 I connect with your spirit man. I ask that the hand of God will be upon you right now. And that the fire of God will begin to be rekindled in your heart. In the name of Jesus. I don't have much time. The Bible says, and Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. And he stood before the angel of the Lord. And, and he answered and spake unto those that stand by him. Take away the filthy garment from him. 
And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from your head. Oh no, I want to share nobody here again. He said, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you, and I will clothe you with change of raiment. Me, in Jacob, you want to touch your Verse 5. And I said, Let them put a, a set a matthias upon his head. So they set a fair matthias upon his head and clothed him with a garment. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Verse 6. And the angel of the Lord protested to Joshua, saying, but that is in law, don't say none of if you will walk in my ways, and if you will keep my commandment, then you will judge my house, and you shall keep this court, and I will give you places to walk among those that stand by. If you make up your mind to begin to walk in righteousness, then I will give you a place among the anointed. I pray for you today that in the name of Jesus. The God of heaven, who stands in the holy place, is drawing you out right now from that snare of the devil. You are being drawn out right now. I even see somebody that is like a woman has caged you. I release you in the name of Jesus. I, I destroy the power that one over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. This day and this mercy is for those that God has mercy upon. It's for those that God wants to use. It's for people that God has specially anointed for a purpose. He might not be to preach, but the enemy is subverting God's purpose. Today, heaven has mercy upon you. Whatever man has against you is hereby wiped off. In the name of Jesus. Whatever man has against you is hereby wiped off. In the name of Jesus. Whatever man has. And they say we have a proof. Uh-uh. But we are in your lawn with that proof in their hand. I declare the mist from today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I command that concerning your life. Oh, those who know you, they will not believe it. One, it cannot be you. But you will tell them that when the way of a man please God. He will make even his enemy to be at peace with him. Uh, I may have gone astray, but I'm back to God now. The God that made the prodigal son to be celebrated again, I declare that in the name of Jesus, where you have been rejected, there shall be massive celebration on your behalf. In the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that God will now honor that glory. God will honor that glory. I see God honoring that glory. I see God honoring that glory in the mighty name of Jesus. That is the way it shall be from now. In the mighty name of Jesus. You said, I have regretted my life all, all this while. Don't regret again. Behold, God make all things new. And whatever the enemy has done can never stop what God is going to do. The best of your life is yet ahead of you. Because when men say it is over, God said, I am just beginning. And I believe God that from today, you shall have testimony and proof of God's faithfulness in your life. In the name of Jesus. I believe God has visited you. And I believe after this message, the hand of God will continue to be upon your life. And you can get across to me. I felt that. Some of you would need to get across to me so that you can go deeper into details of your life and the things you can be able to do. you see details on the screen. Just go ahead and connect. Until I come again next time, don't you ever forget, no matter what you have gone through in life, now that you're a child of God, I believe that the testimony of your life will be that you are wonderful because Jesus is real. I'll see you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye. Wow. I'm Reverend Sam Ajibade, and I want to take this time to specially invite you to be a part of our worship service any Sunday. You know, our church address is Grace Ministries International 11214, Plainfield Street by West Belfort, suit D77031. Listen to me. Everybody needs someone to talk to. In case you have need for counseling, just you can just call the number 872-731. 7263. Listen to me. If you are looking for a place where you will encounter God and get insight in the world, I'll invite you to be a part of our church service every Sunday morning. God bless you. Until I see you. Bye-bye.